Um, who's planning on going to UVic? You like rabbits? They got lots of them. So, quickly, the Globe and Mail published an article in 2010 stating the University of Victoria is struggling with an out-of-control rabbit population. This is true. If you go there and drive around the campus, they're everywhere. Okay. At this time in 2010, this book's pretty current, they estimated there's about 1,500 rabbits. Do you know why there's so many rabbits in Victoria on the island? There's no coyotes on the island. No. Believe me, some people have thought about bringing a couple in the trunk of their car over. Okay, so I don't know at this point in time how many there are, if they try to cull some of them or not, C-U-L-L. -L. All right, but yeah, there was tons of them. They're all over the place. Okay. Okay. They increase. Do you know the gestation period for a rabbit? One month. That's how long they're pregnant for. That's not their life. That's, I'm saying, okay, for humans it's nine months, okay? After a rabbit, rabbit boinks, 30 days later they have a litter, okay? All right. Okay, so more than you wanted to know, right? So the population, because of that, okay? Sorry? Did you start recording? Okay, guys, let's focus. I know it's the last block, but we're not in grade 8 anymore. It goes up 20% per year. Guys, okay, 20% percent percents. We don't want a percent, we want a decimal. What's that as a decimal? That's a fraction. Yeah. Move the decimal two spots to the left. Okay, divide by a hundred. I hope we can all come to the conclusion 20% is 0.2. So we had 1,500, okay, in 2010. So in 2011, we would expect, how would you do this? Would you go 1,500 times 0 0.2 is 300? and then plus 1,500 to give us 1,800. Okay, do you want to know a little shortcut? I want to include the 1,500 plus the 0.2, just multiply it by 1.2. Then you don't have to add it after. Okay? What's 1,800 times 1.2? 1 2160. Okay? That's going up by 20%. And so on and so on and so on. Is this arithmetic growth? Yes, it's going up 2592. Um, and so on. It's almost doubled in what? Three years? Okay, 20% per year, right? Okay. Eighteen hundred times one point two. This number times one point two gives you the next one. Add twenty percent each time. Okay. All right. All right, show that the sequence representing this is geometric state, the common ratio. What's the common ratio here? Is it geometric? How do you know? Let's say I didn't do what I just did. How would you know if this is geometric or not? If I take one term and divide it by the previous, what do you get? Yeah, we already know that, but let's pretend we did. Hey, look at that, 
Guess what this one divided by that one is? Let's prove it. Whoop. Yep. Okay. That's T2 over T1. It's T3 over T2. So on and so on and so on. What's my common ratio? 1.2. Okay. So we don't want to do add 20% each time. We want a common ratio. Okay? All right. If term one in this sequence is the number in 2010, okay, which term of the sequence represents the number of rabbits in 2025? We looked at this a few days ago. When you're trying to find out how many years this is, what do we do? Yes. Okay. 15. You need to add one because remember, I'm not going to explain all this again. It's in the notes a few days ago, but is the first year term one or was it term zero, right? If you count this out from 2010, you want to include 2010. You need to add that first year. Okay? So I need T16 here. Okay? So once I know that, let's actually make a little note there, okay? So anytime when you're talking about year dates, okay, subtract and add one, okay? If you get a question like that, that's what you're gonna do. Subtract and add one. That's 15 years, but I gotta add the first year. All right? So with that, my first year I had 1,500. What was our? 1.2, and I want to know, well, n is 16, okay? t to the n is a r n minus 1, so t 16 is 1,500, 1.2 times n is 16, which will give us 16 minus 1, 15 growths of 20%, right? Common sense says, you know, we didn't really need to know this formula. You could have just done this 15 times, okay? So put that in your calculator, and we get 23110.53. But common sense, what do we want to do with this answer? What is it asking? Okay, it's kind of cruel to have 0.53 of a rabbit. So, common sense, we need to round this to the nearest rabbit. Great. Wait, would that not be 16 minus Yeah, 15. Shouldn't that be 2, 3, 1, 1, 1? But, but is it like, is that an external Like, is it, is it what it's going on? Okay. So, guys, what's the growth factor again? 1.2. Lewis? All right. Guys, this is talking about your brother. You're going to want to pay attention. Yeah, Vinny. Okay, that was growth. This one's decay. Vinny borrows 10 grand from his parents. Okay, he wants to pay back. I don't like the wording here too much. Interest free, so we don't have to worry about that. Okay, he owes 10% less at the end of any year than the previous one. The other way to say this is he pays off 10% of the principal or the balance 
at the end of each year. Okay? So if you start with 10,000, at the end of year one, he's going to pay off. What's 10,000 times 10%? Yeah, okay. 10%, you want to make it a decimal, it's a thousand bucks. So how much does he owe at the end of the first year? 9,000 bucks. Okay. The end of year two, what happens? Same thing. What's 10% of 9,000? Can we see that in our head? So what's my new balance going to be? Or Vinny's balance, not my balance. Okay, could we do this? Yes, we could. That is 810, okay? 8100 minus 810 is 7290, okay? Year four, do the same thing, 6561, so on and so on. Don't worry about this eight years. It gets kind of confusing. We just want to try to see if we can get our formula here. Okay. This forms a geometric sequence. How can we be sure? We take one term. We divide it by the previous. And what do we get when we do that? Is it 10%? 0.1? Aha. Remember, we don't want to subtract. We don't want to divide. We want to know what we multiply it by. Okay? We're multiplying it by 0.9 each time, aren't we? We don't want to deduct 10%. We want to multiply it by something. Okay? So the thinking is, that's how much I'm subtracting that's my common ratio, but I don't want it as percent. I want it as a decimal, move it twice over. That's 0.9. Okay? And remember I asked, what's the difference in R if it's growing or if it's decaying? This number is, can be described as what? Less than 1. Anytime it's less than 1, the number is going to shrink, isn't it? Because you're going to multiply it by some fraction of 1. It's going to go down. If this is greater than 1, it's going to grow. Okay? And if it's negative, well, it just flips between negative and positive, negative and positive, right? So if this is less than 1, we have decay. If it's greater than 1, we have growth. I think it says it down here in the line underneath here anyway. Okay? So that is the growth factor. How much does he owe at the end of the seventh year? There's a couple ways to do this. Okay? End of the seventh year, you can say n is seven, but you have to use this as the end of the first year. Okay? At the end of the first year, it was 9,000. I want the end of the seventh year, which will give us, okay, R is 0.9. So T7 is 9,000, 0.9 to the 7 minus 1, or six more depreciations. Okay? That's the way to use the formula. There's another way, it's called the common sense way. Should I say it or not? Okay, so first of all, let's solve this. So 9,000 times 0.9 to the power of 6. 0.9 to the power of 6 times 9 grand is 4782 Again, common sense, this is dollars and cents, so do I want 0.969? No, I want to round that. And actually soon we're going to round that to the nickel, aren't we? We're not even going to have pennies, but that's another question for another day. Okay? 
So that's how much he owes after the seventh year. The question says he's going to pay all of that as a balloon payment. Don't worry about it, okay? Something about eight years and he's going to pay, blah, blah, blah. who cares, okay? That's what they're asked. That's what we're going to find. Did we have to know this formula to do the question? Okay, so here's another way of thinking about it. I could have just said, I started with 10,000, okay? And I want to go seven depreciations. 10% for seven years. That's gonna give you the same number as this, okay? I have one less, but I started not at time zero, I started at time one, okay? Now the reason I'm saying this is because when we get to tomorrow's question, I'm just going to continue this lesson tomorrow, it's going to talk about money and how money grows, investing, and this way actually makes more sense than the formula way. Okay? So I'm not saying this to try to screw you up, but some people will want to do it like that, some people will want to use the formula. Which one makes more sense to you? Do it. Okay, well, this is a wee bit more. Geometric growth, I just said this, okay? If you didn't write it down, highlight it. If we're going to multiply it by a fraction, that number is going to go down, as long as it's not an improper fraction, right? That's bigger than one, okay? Note. So the next few, we just want the growth factor. Nothing to figure out here, but if you can't get this, then you're not going to get the right answer in the question. Okay? Increasing by 3.5%, what's that as a decimal for starters? Move it two spots to the left. But is that my growth factor? If I multiply it by that, is the number going to get bigger? What do I want to do? What did I do with my rabbits? I want to add a 1 in front of that. That will include the first amount plus the 20%. Okay? So if inflation is 3.5% per year, by the way, that's pretty high by today's standards. It's more like 1. Okay? That's my growth factor. That will give you the amount you already had plus 3.5%. For example, if something costs $100 last year and inflation's 3.5%, that means next year it's going to be 10350 If you multiply it by that number, that's what you get. Okay, like I just said, with the rabbits, I want to not add the 20%, then add the number I had. I want to multiply that by, here's the 1500 and the 20% all in one step. Okay? So you see, if I do that and I get 300 and I add it to 1500, I get 1800. If all I do is multiply that by 1.2, I can just do that in one step. Okay? Like, it works, right? Times it by 1.2 for 20%. If it's 3.5%, times it by 1.035. Okay? Let's double check. 100 times 1.035. It's $103.50. Okay, it's gone up by 3.5%. Is inflation good? It is. Because where you have deflation in countries, that's where things get really, really nasty. Because if you know something's going to be a lower price later on, why would you buy it today? That stalls the growth of the country. Nobody's spending any money. That's not good. You want inflation. Here in Canada, we want it between 1% and 3%. That's your economics lesson for the day.
Okay, in some places in Africa, it's a million percent inflation. So every time you go shopping, you bring twice as much money. You go shopping every three days. Last week it cost 100 bucks, this week it cost 200 bucks. Okay, Zimbabwe, seriously, they printed a billion dollar bill because all of a sudden their money wasn't worth anything anymore. Anyway. Fish is decreasing by 2%. Everybody with me? Is this growth or decay? It has to be less than one. If it's going down by 2%, that's the same as timesing it by 0.98. Okay, that one's kind of tricky. Let's try our 100 example again. I had 100 fish in a lake. If it goes down by 2%, that means in a year I have 98 fish. What's 100 times 0.98? 98 fish. Next year times it by 0.98 again. Can't have half a fish or a fraction of a fish, but okay. on average, you're losing 2%. You got to times it by 0.98. Is that less than one? Yes, it is. Okay. Any questions on that? If something goes down by 5% a year, what's the growth rate? Point 0.95. Okay. The example we just did. It's going down by 10% per year. What's the growth rate? 100% minus 10% is 90%, which is 0.9. Okay? Just subtract it from 100% and make it a decimal. All right? Doubling. Sound like growth or decay? Sounds like growth. What's a number, another word for double? Two. Okay, here's another tricky one. The value of a computer decreases by one-fifth each year. But I don't want the decrease number. I want what is the growth number? What's one minus one-fifth? If I multiply it by four-fifths, it's going down by one-fifth. Okay? Otherwise known as, what's one divided by five? Twenty percent. So my growth rate is, this is eighty percent, isn't it? If you like percents. This is just it as a fraction. Okay? Yeah, no, kind of tricky. A ball rebounds to three quarters of its height each time it bounces because the rest is lost to friction. That one's pretty straightforward. Times it by three quarter. Okay. One to four, uh, but like I said, you got a quiz tomorrow on yesterday's stuff. So numbers, the last few, like what was it, 14, 15, 16, for sure that will be on the quiz, right? No, not 15, 14, 16, 17.